Preparing Your Programs for Debugging with ZXDC at Marist College. Hi, I'm Dave Cole, President of Colesoft and Chief Architect of the ZXDC Debugger for Assembler Programs. This video will show Assembler students at Marist College how to prepare their program assembly jobs to produce programs ready to debug with ZXCC. Okay, let's get started. Basically, there are four steps involved in preparing a program for execution. First, you have to write the program. Second, you have to assemble it. This basically is the process of translating the assembler language statements into machine language. The output of the assembler is an object module that simply is the hexadecimal data that the computer can directly understand and execute. Third, the object module has to be processed by a program called the binder to create a load module. This is similar to the make process used in PC systems. Fourth, you have to run the load module. Then, after your program has finished execution, you get to look at your program's output and try to puzzle out why your program screwed up so badly. Your only clues are your inputs and your outputs. What happened along the way is out of reach until ZXDC comes along. A note about the binder. Generally, the outputs of assemblers and compilers are called object modules. These contain the hexadecimal machine language translations of the original program. There is an exception to this, but generally the system cannot execute object modules directly. They are not quite yet in the proper format for loading into execution. The correct format is called a load module, or sometimes a program object, but I'll leave further discussion of program objects for another course. Load modules are executable objects that are created by combining together one or more object modules. This combining process on PCs is called make. On mainframes, it used to be called link editing. Now it's called binding. So even though your load modules will be built from the output of only one assembly, that output still needs the binder to convert it from object module format to load module format. In complex programs, it often is the case that separate parts of the program will be assembled separately. It is even possible for large programs to contain pieces written in different languages. It is the binder's job to combine all of the elements of such programs into a single executable load module. The binder is the current incarnation of an older program called the linkage editor. This is why the bind process is often called the link edit process. However, I personally have gotten into the habit of calling it the bind process. Others have not. So far, in order to assemble and run your jobs, you have been using the lab end members of a library called userid.asm.source. These members contain an envelope for your programs consisting both of JCL and assembler code. The JCL invokes a proc named hllasm. This proc is sort of a macro that contains canned JCL consisting of three job steps for running three programs one after the other. The first step executes a program called the assembler. Its input is the source code for your program. Its output is a temporary data set containing your program's object module. The second step executes a program called the binder. Its input is the object module created by the assembler. Its output is a temporary library containing your program's load module. The third step executes your program, as produced by the binder. 
When your program finishes, the entire job finishes, and the load library containing your program's load module is automatically purged from the system. This is not suitable for using ZXDC. It is not suitable because ZXDC is an interactive debugger. It runs your program's load module interactively so that you can conduct a conversation with it to see what it is doing, how it is doing it, and why it is doing it. Therefore, your program's load module must hang around long enough for you to run and rerun it interactively. It must not be deleted microseconds after it is created. And in these simple student work cases, it is best to run your program interactively in TSO, not in the batch. So the canned JCL needs to be changed. It still needs to assemble and bind your program, but then it should not try and run your program. Instead, it needs to save your program's load module in a permanent library instead of a temporary one. If you look in the userid.asm.source library, you will find four members named XTC 1, 2, 3, and 4. These correspond to the four lab members. The XTC members are identical to the lab members, except that they contain the necessary JCL changes that allow you to save your load modules so that you can debug them with ZXTC. The load modules are saved in a load library named userid.asm.load, and they are given the names lab1, lab2, lab3, and lab4. Okay, enough about theory. Let's put all this information into practice. I'm going to use XDC1 as an example and take you step by step through the process of setting up to debug your programs using ZXDC. Well, the first thing you need to do is to customize XDC1 to your TSO user ID. A simple change all command will do the trick. The KC hashtag strings need to change in four places. Then, of course, you will need to add your assembler code to the file between the begin and end markers and following the data area marker. Spoiler alert! Here's how I might have coded the Lab 1 assignment. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about what I've done here. For now, that's not important. I'll just go ahead and submit this job for execution using the editor's submit command. Then press enter, and again. Wow, that was quick. So I'll press enter again, and I'll get back to the editor display. Now I'll set up to use ISPF split next command, and then position the cursor to the top line, and press enter to create a second ISPF window. Then I'll use the SD command to bring up IBM's SDSF program so that we can see what is happening to our job. I use the status command to look at the jobs that I own. There will always be a job labeled TSU something. This is not actually a job. It is your TSO session which to the system really isn't very much different from a job. Anyway, of the actual jobs, the one with the highest job number generally is the newest and so is probably the one we want. So I'll select it with a question mark to get a display of all the printer datasets that the job has created. This one is your assembler output listing. This one is your binder output listing. And these are called system files. They are present for all jobs and they contain standard information of various sorts. For example, the first of these contains a listing of all system log messages issued by or for your job. For us, the most interesting messages show the completion codes for the assembler and binder steps. Zeros are good. Well, there's a lot more to poke around in here, but we now already know what we need to know. Both the assembler and binder steps ran and they both ran successfully. 
So a simple equal D is all we need to do to get over to the ZXDC startup panel. Well, there you go. That's how to set up and run your jobs in preparation for debugging with ZXDC. Let's check out our load library and make sure the Lab 1 load module is there. Start with equal 3.4 and press enter. Fill in your user ID and press enter. Now use the M command to display your load library's member list. And there it is, your Lab 1 load module. Again, a simple equal D will get you back to ZXCC's startup panel. So now fill it in with your load library name and your load module name and option 2 to finally get in to ZXDC. Okay, that's enough for now. With the next video, we will start using ZXDC itself. If you have any questions or want additional information, feel free to contact me directly. My email address is dbcole at colesoft.com and I can be reached by phone at 540-456-6518. We also have a web presence on our own site and on Facebook and on YouTube. On YouTube, we have several how-to videos about ZXTC. You just might want to take a look at one or two, or three, or four. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps. Bye-bye.